One of the most intimidating devices used by the Watchtower Society is the threat of appearing before a judicial committee of elders. Public censure, even disfellowshipping, can be the sentence of this powerful court. The inflexibility of Watchtower policies has led to thousands of instances of mental distress, even suicide. I am confessing on social media that I have a problem when it comes to crying. I don't. Sometimes I wish I could because I believe it relieves stress. So when I felt like crying after reading a newspaper article, that is not a small thing for me. I'm speaking about the newspaper article and also the radio documentary discussed in the previous video. The links are in the description below. I have a daughter who is living away from me, and I worry about her all the time if she would come to some harm and her father is not there. She is living in the United States and I am in Jamaica. Every time I hear of the sexual abuse of a child, I think about my daughter and wonder how I would cope if I was to learn someone sexually abused her. My princess is eight years old. Then I read this story about a five-year-old girl who was raped by a 14-year-old boy. The arrangement was for her to sleep over with a Jehovah's Witness family and would be taken to the Kingdom Hall the next day. When the child saw her mom, she ran and hugged her, clinging to her. Her mother realized something was wrong. When her mom asked her to explain what happened, she used a stuffed toy to describe what he did to her. The story broke my heart. A clearly traumatized child. But the part that really tore me, the part that is really infuriating and painful, is that, having decided not to press charges, having decided to do the things the watchtower say, the child was made to hug her rapist. No, seriously. What on earth were these stupid people thinking they were doing to the child? Teaching her a lesson in forgiveness or telling her that what he did to her was just fine? And why put back in the arms of the rapist the child he just raped? That is what those people did. And I'm sorry, I find it very, very hard to identify with what the parents did. That tells me that the depth of the brainwashing is much, much deeper than I can imagine. And it makes the silly assertions that I belong to a cult even more silly. My church views that outright as a police matter, pure and simple. There is not one person in my church who could ever get me to cause my daughter to hug a boy who raped her. That is so insane. That is so excessively cruel to a child. Then there is the case of a girl who was molested by an elder for, get this, a number of years. Fast forward a few years to make a long story short. She grew up to be disfellowshipped by a judicial committee comprising of her abuser. That's right. The man who sexually abused her had the opportunity to disfellowship her. And do you want to hear what he disfellowshipped her for? She was disfellowshipped for sexual immorality. Yes, I counted to ten to keep my composure and get to the point of this video. According to Jesus, the act of disfellowshipping must be the last resort. Only a stubborn, unrepentant sinner should be disfellowshipped. And it must be done by the church, says the Lord. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. 
But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Jesus gave no instruction for a small committee of men only to meet to adjudicate on matters of discipline. He instructed that the church be the final decider. So, to take the church out of the decision, giving it to a small group of men, is to contravene the command of Jesus. Tell it unto the church. Can it ever be expected that a group of men will ever understand what a woman goes through in a difficult situation? Asking men only to adjudicate on every matter involving women is as insane as asking a five-year-old girl to hug her 14-year-old rapist. This organization is reminding me of the Twilight Zone, and I do not know what the Twilight Zone is. I ended up getting disfellowshipped. Sonia Erickson has been disfellowshipped. It crushed my whole family. Tell me, people, is it really the norm for persons to be disfellowshipped in an announcement to the church without saying what the offense is? Please tell me it isn't so. Let us assume that a witness becomes convicted that the doctrines, even some of them, are not true. Wow. Oh, wow. Something just hit me like a bolt of lightning why they use a judicial committee. Wow! It is for the very same reason they do not allow questions in the Watchtower study. Now seriously, I am feeling insulted when people compare my church to this evil organization. Seriously, really insulted. How could people think that I could belong to an organization that is similar to the one that I have done over 250 videos criticizing. How insane would that be? I do these videos because I am constantly seeing things that are bizarre, things that are so contrary to the scriptures, things that are so contrary to what I have come to understand in religion, things that are so contrary to what obtains in my church. Get this, get this. If someone who no longer believes the Watchtower's crazy doctrines were ever allowed to face the congregation and explain himself or herself, chances are several members would see the falsehoods in the doctrines. Disfellowshipping would be that much harder to do. So they insulated the church from hearing the other side of the story by putting some yes men in the position. Yes, men who deem it a grand privilege to be an elder. If you as an elder on the judicial committee realize that the member is actually correct, you yourself cannot bring your views to the congregation. You too would have to secretly face a judicial committee. So it's not just a matter of injustice, but it is also another mind control device. Anyhow, back to the point of injustice that I was about to address when that dawned on me. So, if a girl were to get disfellowshipped because she rejected the crazy doctrine of the faithful and discreet slave, and it is announced that she was disfellowshipped without the reason stated, doesn't that leave her open to speculation that she was disfellowshipped for the most common reason, sexual immorality? Isn't it a simple matter of injustice? To subject someone to that kind of speculation, the courts of the land, the courts of what you call Satan's world, recognizes the sanctity of a person's reputation. That is why courts order hefty awards to victims of slander or libel. How unfair it is for someone who leaves an organization on spiritual grounds to be open to speculation on their reputation about things like sexual immorality. And to add insult to injury, she is not allowed to speak to a member to say it isn't so. If that is not satanic cruelty, what is? Or is this organization claiming to be Christian not concerned about what is just and fair? 
He has shown thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Dear Watchtower members, do you think an elder could be so brazen to disfellowship a girl for sexual immorality after sexually abusing her for years if your justice system was not crafted in the dark? Does this demonstrate to you that your justice system cannot face light? A fundamental principle of justice is that it must not only be done, but it must be clearly seen to be done. Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. I have examined him before you and find no fault with this man touching those things whereof you accuse him. Imagine that Pilate's judgment hall was more just than the watchtower's system of discipline. In Pilate's hall, Jesus was allowed to face the people and the people had a say in the decision. Doth our Lord judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? It is a sad day when Satan's world does better than your religion on the subject of justice. And speaking of Satan's world, in the next video I shall make a revelation that should cause you to really open your mind. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.